bit. Joining us now to talk more about this former acting U.S. Attorney General and Newsmax analyst Matthew Whitaker with us. Uh, Mr. Attorney General, great to see you. Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you, Rob. Um, I'm wondering why you think we've got to delay. So we're, we're now in that time period when we thought this would be issued, the decision would be issued initially. Um, we still haven't gotten anything, and we still, seven weeks later, don't know who the leaker is. Why is the court waiting? Well, court watching is always a favorite pastime of lawyers in Washington, D.C., and I'm glad that you're joining uh, many of us in that. But, right. you know, this the Supreme Court's rhyme or reason for releasing certain um, opinions is typically just driven by the fact that they leave town uh, at the, about the beginning of July, really heading into the July 4th uh, holiday. So I just think they're trying to get their work done. Like you said, they released six opinions yesterday, including a case on uh, Texas uh, tribal lands and uh, veterans benefits and a Medicare case. So, I mean, there's, there were several cases released. I think the Dobbs opinion obviously is the most difficult and there's a back and forth. We saw the majority opinion that was leaked, uh, but there's a back and forth with concurrences and dissents that is a process. And if it's not ready, it's not ready. I think also the court um, is concerned about the violence surrounding um, its opinion, the threats that have uh, recently emanated, including the assassination attempt uh, on uh, Judge Kavanaugh. So all these things, I think, are going to probably make this one of the last opinions that comes out from the court. Yeah, Alan Dershowitz was on with Greta Van Susteren on Tuesday night. He used to clerk at the Supreme Court uh, in the late 1960s. He said back then, so again, not that long ago, you could knock on the door of the court and you'd be invited in and you'd have a good chance of, of meeting a justice and, and certainly uh, being shown the court. It looks a lot different now. Somebody was outside Brett Kavanaugh's home and was there to, to assassinate him. Thank goodness for the U.S. Marshals. Uh, the Senate passed a bill unanimously offering justices and their families uh, protection when they are outside of the court. 27 Democrats, the bill passed, um, and we've got a graphic. Uh, 27 Democrats, many members of the squad, voted against this bill in the House. Can you make any sense of why they would do that? Well, if you apply the filter that the most likely explanation is the explanation, it can only suggest that these folks uh, want political violence. They want uh, vacancies in the court uh, so that they can put their radical uh, judges on there, uh, no matter how those vacancies might occur. I, I think it's very concerning. I mean, they, their political cover was some explanation that they wanted the staff of the court to also get security, but that's that nobody knows who the staff of the court is, and so right. there's you know the threat profile is much different. And I, I just think it's outrageous that they would vote against a common sense um, bill, especially the week that the person outside of Brett Kavanaugh's house was charged with attempted murder. Yeah. To that end, uh, let's say that they rule on this and Roe v. Wade stays intact. It, it remains in place. Uh, the chief justice, after the leak, said that, that the 5-4 draft decision was legit. Um, do you think we'll ever find out what happened in the ensuing seven or eight weeks until we get a decision, if it's not overturned? Uh, if it's not overturned, I don't see a world where Roe v. Wade isn't overturned based on that leaked opinion. I think the only question now is where is uh, Justice Roberts on this opinion? Does he concur in the outcome and overturn Roe v. Wade, or does he vote against that and demonstrate again that he is not a conservative like he was sold to us in the Bush administration? Right. But that being said, you know my biggest concern right now is the political violence. There are flyers going up, uh, anonymously uh, put up, threatening yeah. serious violence in Washington, D.C. and nationwide. And I'm mostly concerned about that, another repeat of the summer of 2020. Well, great point. The difference between now and January 6, 2021, is that the National Guard is on standby uh, in Washington. They were not on standby January 6, which is fascinating. Um, Matthew Whitaker, great to have you back on. Appreciate the insight, as always. Yeah, have a great day. All right, you too. We've got a